Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for 292 Baby Educational Videos, Support for Parents and Caregivers of Infants. I would like you to know that all of the experts featured in our video series have given freely of their time and all are from the Early Childhood Community of Greater Rochester. On behalf of everyone affiliated with the 292 Baby Project, we wish you the very best of luck with your children. 292 Baby is a community collaboration administered by Monroe Community College. Today's focus, we're looking at newborns, and we're going to look specifically at skin care of newborns, and we're thrilled to have with us Dr. Melissa Novak, and thank you again for joining us, yes, Melissa. thanks for having me. Okay, Melissa is a pediatrician with the Panoramic Pediatrics, and right. um, skin care, you know, and I'm thinking back, and one of the things about this show is it takes me back to when my kids were infants, and I'm just coming back, and... Um, um, an important issue, isn't it, skin care? Definitely. We get so many questions in those first couple of weeks of life about the baby's skin. Yeah. Their skin is so unique. It's so different than any other time throughout their life. Yeah. I can remember one of the um, um, things thinking, is, are, is the skin even different for kids? Yeah. Actually, newborn skin is pretty unique. What, what happens is when babies are in utero, there's, there's kind of a natural moisturizer on the skin itself. Um, and the the fluid itself, the amniotic fluid, is moisturizing to the skin. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty protected while the baby is in utero. And then there's this huge transition to the outside world, yeah, sure. which uh, the baby has to make in the skin, too. And the baby all of a sudden is in a dry environment. Um, it's a little bit harsher. And certainly in the winter months, it can be even more of a struggle. So we all picture this real nice, smooth, pink baby skin mm -hmm. uh, when we picture a newborn, but often there are lots of things that pop up and transitions that the skin goes through. Mm -hmm. And so the questions come from that, definitely, this, this big transition phase for the baby. Do you find parents worried about the skin care of their kids? And definitely. They worry a lot about the skin because a lot of the rashes that babies get can look pretty scary, actually, mm -hmm. in the newborn period. And yep and uh, the skin can look very dry and cracked and, and flaky. And, and so the look of it can be a, a little bit scary for parents in mm -hmm. the beginning. Yeah. Um, most of it's a very normal, natural process, but um, we get lots of questions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can remember one of the first things that concerned me was the whole care of the skin around and with the umbilical cord. Yeah. And is yeah. that a concern a lot of parents have? Definitely. Yeah. The umbilical cord is, is a focus of a, of a lot of questions that come up initially. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of th things have changed around the care of the umbilical cord. Mm -hmm. um, it used to be that we would you know, put a special dye on the umbilical cord and have parents treat the umbilical cord with alcohol mm -hmm. uh, every single diaper change. And we've really come away from that. So even parents that have had other children, you know, now new questions come up because newborn nurseries are doing things different and we're recommending different uh, care of the cord now. Yeah. Now, I was part of the generation that did that. Yes. Um, alcohol, I guess, all the, the time. Freaking, to, yeah, yeah, the rubbing alcohol. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So now what they're doing, they're not actually using, in most newborn nurseries, that dye, the purple dye that was on the cord. Mm -hmm. um, and we're just letting it naturally dry and not doing as much of the alcohol. Uh, what we found happened was that most of the babies who we treated, the parents were very um, good at treating the cord with alcohol. The cords didn't fall off as nicely or as, as quickly mm -hmm. as, um, as other babies. So we found that you do need a little bit of that natural skin bacteria to help with the separation of the cord. Mm -hmm. And so what they're recommending now is to just basically keep the cord nice and dry. You, sometimes the parents have to fold the diaper under so the cord's exposed to air so mm -hmm. it can dry out real nicely. Yep. Um, but as long as it's looking okay and doesn't have a lot of drainage or redness around the belly, mm -hmm. um, just kind of letting it be and not, and not using a lot of alcohol on it. Yep. And I see that on the slide that you've got up here, it, it, they are saying just the sponge bath until it falls off. Yes, that is one important thing. We don't like babies to be kind of soaked or saturated around the cord mm -hmm. itself. And, and that's just to help with the drying, to help prevent infection. Yep. So, yep, just really giving the baby a you know, sponge off type of bath yep. um, rather than the soaking baths. Yep. Those can wait. <laughs> I remember when my, with the kids, when they were babies, the, um, the umbilical cord got hard. Yep. And it, it just always seemed like if I moved it or anything that that would hurt them. Right, that's a great question. Yeah, a lot of parents um, that do worry about that. And as long as the cord is, 
is not looking um, infected, where it's, there's lots of drainage or redness on the belly, it shouldn't hurt the baby at all, mm -hmm. actually. And most kids um, don't even really notice or, or fuss much when if you do use a little bit of alcohol on mm -hmm. the cord, so it doesn't seem to bother them. And a lot of parents ask, ask as well when the cord falls off, and mm -hmm. that's usually in about seven to 10 days that we'll see that. Yep. Some babies it takes a little bit longer, or closer to two weeks, mm -hmm. but they wonder if when it breaks off and falls off, does that hurt the baby? And yeah. again, it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. Nope. It's a very normal thing. The baby often doesn't even know notice yeah. that when it happens. I remember wanting it to fall off, like, come on, hurry up and get off. <laughs> you know, like, do exactly. parents ever try to hurry that along, that process? Um, I, I bet behind the scenes, definitely, <laughs> yeah. there's yeah. a yeah. little bit of encouragement. Yeah. Although most parents are actually pretty, pretty frightened and don't want to touch it. Yeah. And, and that's, that's how we work Yeah, there. and sometimes we have to help, help them a little bit with yeah. cleaning. The, there's often a little bit of flaking or dried mm -hmm. um, blood actually that comes off um, out of the belly button afterwards yeah. for a period of time and sometimes they're a little worried about that yep. um, but usually as long as it's not real active drainage or or active bleeding it's just fine yeah okay yeah. so that's got to be that's a concern in every parents because every child has the umbilical cord uh, but there's Definitely. some other things too variations in skin color that would concern parents Yes, babies actually can be a wide variety of colors um, in the initial newborn period. Mm -hmm. um, most babies when they're first born actually have a high red cell count, and so they often look very ruddy, almost real red or, mm -hmm. or pink in color. And then that can kind of fade away over the first um, couple, of, a couple of weeks to month. Mm -hmm. And then we see sometimes, um, they're showing right now a picture of a baby's leg with modeling. And that often you'll see that real lacy, um, marbly looking mm -hmm. rash on the skin. And it pops up typically when infants are stressed in some way. Usually it's cold stress. So it happens all the time in the pediatrician's office when we mm -hmm. get them all unbundled for their newborn exam. Mm -hmm. um, and it's typically most dramatic in the first month of life. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll see kind of even on their bellies or their extremities, they'll get that real marbly looking um, changes in the skin and it's just their skin is not used to um, or not good at regulating temperature and so the blood vessels kind of dilate and constrict in different areas and so that's why you see that pattern which can be a little frightening as well mm -hmm. to see in for parents. And it's not something the parents should be overly concerned about? No it's not a dangerous thing per se mm -hmm. for the kid. Um, the only thing it may be a signal to you is that maybe the baby should be um, bundled a little bit better, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so sometimes when babies have baths um, or they're getting diaper changes, you'll see that. And it just says that the baby's getting a little cold and maybe needs a, to be wrapped mm -hmm. up a little bit quicker. Yeah. Um, but it's not a dangerous thing to the baby at all. And, and over time, their skin learns to, to regulate the temperature much better and you'll see less and less of that. So mostly that occurs just because the baby is cold. Yeah. And it's responding that way, and, and it's not quite ready to regulate it at a regular or, or consistently throughout. Definitely, yeah. The baby's just getting used to the outside world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, the skin didn't have to regulate temperature yeah. when the baby was in utero, and so now there's all these sort of new um, stresses put on the baby, and that's one of them that yeah. the, the skin has to gradually, um, the body has to gradually learn how to regulate that. You know, when I think about it, to actually go from inside your mom into this outside world yeah. really is a huge transition, isn't it? I it mean, is. It is. Every part of the baby has to adjust and work differently yeah. than, than um, inside. So um, the skin is one of the most dramatic ones because we can see those changes. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot going on underneath as well yeah. <laughs> that yeah. the baby's getting used to and learning. So modeling is one natural yeah. skin color thing. Are there other skin color? Uh, the other thing that we'll notice that parents will be concerned about is the hands and feet. Mm -hmm. um, often babies will have almost a blue or purple color to their hands and feet and then it'll usually stop right at the wrist and the rest of them will be a nice pink or kind of a pale color. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all as well is the, the skin temperature issue. Just mm -hmm. in those extremities it's very hard for them to, to regulate the temperature and so you'll often see um, especially when the baby's a little bit um, more cold, you'll see some of that purpling. And that's not, a, again, not a dangerous thing to mm -hmm. the baby. 
um, the color is fine as, as long as you're adjusting it in those areas. Yeah. Um, that's a, just a fine color, a color for them and it's a normal pattern yeah. that we see. And again, over time, you'll see less and less of that real purpling. Yeah. Color. I can see that being very scary. Yes. To parents, or it would be to me, I think, if I looked at my kids and saw that. Yeah. So. Definitely. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So coloring is a, is a um, anything else with the coloring? Um, you know, definitely, we pay attention to color very closely in the newborns. We see anything from um, babies turning very yellow or jaundiced mm -hmm. in the newborn periods. So that's another color that we'll get sure. asked about. Sure. Um, often it's a very normal uh, type of jaundice and, mm -hmm. and um, is a natural process that will fade on its own. But mm -hmm. it's something that is, if it's very dramatic, it's something you should let your pediatrician know about. And usually we're seeing the kids frequent enough that we're going to pick up on that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yellow is another color that we see often. It was um, my firstborn head ja was jaundiced. Mm -hmm. Not much, but the doctor recommended we take him out and hold him in the sun. <laughs> you know? Right. And the word jaundice scared me. Yes. You know, just like, oh my God, what's wrong? You know? Right. And uh, of course, I think parents are very sensitive right in the beginning to anything being wrong or, or not right. right. And, so. and certainly jaundice in the newborn period is, is um, for the most part, a normal process. Yeah. But that is some, a word that they hear in other settings. In yeah. the adult world, it's very different if someone is jaundiced. Yeah. Um, but you're exactly right. Um, you know, the babies are, are, again, learning how to regulate their and process their their own um, red cells and that's what kind of leads to the jaundice that they just haven't caught up with the processing of that. Yeah. So sunlight actually is, is one way that can help with that. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately in Rochester we don't have much of it <laughs> yeah, right, so we can't right. rely on it very yeah, often. Yeah. So it's something that we usually follow in the office and, and, uh, and help parents with. But yeah. again, normal, uh, fairly normal color depending on, on how severe it is. Yeah. Um, and but it's something we get asked about a lot that pops up on the skin. And once past the newborn phase, which you're, we think of as about the first month, is that right? Yeah, correct. Once yeah. beyond that, it's usually not a problem as the baby adjusts. Well, even usually, it's only the first couple of weeks that we really mm -hmm. see issues with with yellowing of the skin, yeah. and then that's usually gone by mm -hmm. that point. Yep. Okay. Definitely. You know, another area that seemed to be of concern to us, to my wife and I, were things like rashes. And that must, is that a big, that's probably a big area, isn't it? It is a big area, and uh, babies get the most interesting rashes. Mm -hmm. It is so true. I think we have a couple of pictures of some common rashes in the newborn period mm -hmm. that you may see soon after birth. Oh, here's one. Um, this, this first one is a very common rash that you can see anywhere on the body in a newborn. Usually pops up in the first two to three days of life has kind of a red blotchy spots mm -hmm. with those those yellow or white dots on top of mm -hmm. the red blotches and um, can look very frightening. Um, that rash goes away very normally on its own within two weeks, not harmful at all to the baby. Mm -hmm. The second picture you're seeing there is a picture of a baby's nose and a lot of parents will ask because they have a lots of little small white dots on their nose mm -hmm. often. And again, this, this isn't the, the classic baby acne that we'll talk about. Um, it's something called milia, and it's just plugged pores. They're not exactly infected or anything. Mm -hmm. It's um, nothing that you have to do or wash the baby's skin or put any creams on. Mm -hmm. um, again, a natural process that will usually over the first couple months kind of resolve. Yep. So. We're going to go to a break here in just a minute, but so far with the two rashes that we've covered, milia, which is just the little white yep, dots, little white and dots. The, um, then the, the facial rash, yep. both of them not both of them look scary to me. Yes, yeah. But not, yeah. not a super concern. They are, and, and they're not a concern at all, but they're definitely scary um, to parents. And often if you just ask, you know, bring your baby in, we can take a peek, and a lot of the newborn rashes are just reassuring families yeah. that this is a natural thing we see with babies. It's not a concern. You don't have to do anything special to the skin. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, doing things to the skin can often make certain rashes worse. Oh, so often yep. we'll have you just kind of clean in with water mm -hmm. and not doing a whole lot else to the skin. So um, yeah, they're, they're pretty classic rashes and we can often just reassure families mm -hmm. that this is going to be fine mm -hmm. and your baby's going to have normal skin <laughs> uh, when it resolves. Yeah. We're talking newborns today and we're talking skin care of newborns and we're, with us is Dr. Melissa Novak and again Melissa, we're right in the middle of uh, skin care, yeah. a big concern for parents and uh, one that like you said is very visible to parents. Definitely, yeah. definitely. So we're talking rashes, we've gotten through a couple of them. 
next one that parents are concerned about? Yeah, there's a couple of rashes that um, typically pop up after the newborn period that we see in the you know first couple of months uh, of life during infancy that are, again are very common that we hear a lot about. Mm -hmm. Um, the first one is a um, scaling that you see on the baby's scalp. If you've heard of cradle cap before. Yes. Uh, yep. Yeah. That it happens very often. There's a picture of it up right now. It's um, yellow uh, flaky scales on top of the scalp. Mm -hmm. um, it can be a little bit of a frustration to parents because it is a little bit difficult to treat. And uh, there are a couple of tips that we often use in the office to help parents with it. Uh, one sounds a little crazy and parents may look at us a little strange, but the best moisturizer that we have found and that parents have said works very well for the scalp mm -hmm. is actually regular old olive oil from your kitchen. Mm. And you don't want to put a, a lot on, but just a little bit can really help. The scalp can soak up that, that moisture and it can really help to decrease the amount of flakes or scaling that they're seeing. Mm -hmm. The other thing that parents often do is use a little small baby uh, comb to try to help lift the scales up off the scalp mm -hmm. and get that off. Um, but again, it's not a dangerous rash to, to infants at all. It's more of an uh, annoyance mm -hmm. type of thing. Is it type painful at all for the kids? Typically not. Again, mm -hmm. kids often, um, you may see some of them scratch a little bit at mm -hmm. it, try to get up there and scratch a little bit. Mm -hmm. But it's not a painful thing. It's, it's more of kind of a nuisance mm -hmm. for, for the baby and the parents. Yeah. But but an itchy for the kids. It might, yeah, yeah, I have seen that some kids seem a little bit itchy with it, but not all. Yeah. Not all of okay. them. Some of them don't even really pay attention to it at all. It's more, it's just real visible to the yeah. parents that they want to help okay. get rid of it. And this happens outside of that newborn period. So Typically, we're talking the first two or three months yep. as opposed to the first month. Exactly. Typically okay. you see it kind of develop over the, the first um, couple months of life and it may persist kind of off and on throughout infancy. Mm -hmm. So. Right. Yeah. Are there rashes beyond that infancy period? Yeah, real common and, and not as common this time of year, more in the summer months, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see heat rashes, uh, sometimes called prickly heat. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's up on the screen right now. Mm -hmm. There's a picture of it. It's very classically in the, the neck and upper chest area. Mm -hmm. And this is because infants often have very short uh, necks that are kind of have a lot of rolls and they mm -hmm. can hide lots of moisture in that area mm -hmm. especially when infants get into the phase where they're really drooling a lot with teething um, or feedings are very messy or they have spit ups that often get trapped in that area yeah. and that can be a very big irritation to the skin mm -hmm. um, that moisture combined with any any sort of irritant mm -hmm. um, can cause those little red bumps to pop up very classically in that area if it's a hot summer day we'll see it kind of in other areas of the skin because warmth and moisture really mm -hmm. really cause the prickly heat to to pop up yeah and is there a treatment for that the best thing to do is is to try to keep the areas as dry as possible so after a baby has um, a real big spit up you know if you can mm -hmm. try to dab those areas just with you know a wet washcloth just regular water mm -hmm. and then kind of pat it dry so the baby isn't as moist under the, under the neck and, and in the upper chest area. Mm -hmm. And that helps to prevent it as, as best we can. There's yep. no um, magic cream or anything to make it go away mm -hmm. faster. Yep. Um, again, usually not a rash that bothers the babies a whole, a whole lot. Um, but it definitely, uh, it definitely seems to be the heat and moisture that, that causes it. Yeah. You know, when you say heat and moisture, it makes me think of one very common thing, and that was diaper rash, and that was something that we dealt with the kids all the time. Yes, yeah. definitely. Diaper rashes, I would say almost all kids are going to have a diaper rash at some point, mm -hmm. um, you know, through their infancy. And there's a couple of different types of diaper rashes, and the most common one is an irritant diaper rash. And that happens more often now that we're using a lot of the disposable diapers. Mm -hmm. And the baby's skin is so sensitive, so even just rubbing up against the diaper mm -hmm. area um, can, can cause the, the rash to pop out. And those are um, basically treated with those barrier creams. Mm -hmm. So the Balmex, the Desitin, mm -hmm. uh, those type of creams. Yep. There's a couple other rashes that need more medicated creams 
So if the regular barrier creams, the desitin and Balmex aren't working, often we'll take a look at it and see mm. if it looks more like a, a yeast type diaper rash. Yep. Okay, because I know that was a that was a concern, but that's what it was, was just making sure the diapers were changed regularly yeah. and that the baby was kept dry. Exactly, and as airing out your baby as much as possible in the diaper area sometimes does the best yeah. for them, yeah. you know, keeping that area as dry as possible and changing them as frequently as you can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. How about acne with kids? Yep, baby acne is, a, is always comes up as a question. Very common to develop in the first three to four weeks of life, and it can persist mm -hmm. until about four months or so, four okay. to six months. And this is a picture of typical baby acne. Mm -hmm. It's um, thought to be because of some of the maternal hormones that they received during pregnancy from mom. Mm -hmm. um, natural process, it's going to get better. We know it is. Mm -hmm. um, scary so looking. It's scary looking. It yeah. you know, doesn't make for... Um, you know, as fun baby pictures yeah. for parents um, sometimes, yeah. but it's just fine. The baby's going to have normal skin. It, mm -hmm. um, you do not need to treat it with anything. There's no acne treatments mm -hmm. that the baby should have on the skin, nothing. If a parent's nuzzling the kid and kissing the child and making contact with the child with their own face, any implications for the parents? It's no. It's not, not something that would No, not a contagious or, thing at all. It's yeah. just um, a natural process because of the hormones are kind of peaking and going down in the baby after yeah. delivery. Yeah. Yeah, so very Eczema, normal. is that a concern? Eczema is a big concern, and it can start in the newborn period, and it can be quite severe in some kids. Mm -hmm. um, again, I think we have a nice picture of this. It's very classic to be kind of on the cheeks, the very roughened red areas on the cheeks, and this can be itchy for kids. Yeah. Um, in infants, it can happen anywhere on the body as well, yeah. on, their, on their belly, on their arms and legs. Um, this is really key that we really focus on moisturizing these babies. You know, most babies don't need a whole lot of creams or lotions on their skin. Mm -hmm. Kids with eczema actually do need to be moisturized mm -hmm. and we like, um, we like to stay away from some of the baby lotions actually and use some regular good moisturizing creams, um, you know, such as a eucerin cream or even a regular Vaseline petroleum jelly. Mm -hmm. um, that's a great moisturizer. So It's not a medicated anything. It's no, well, like, occasionally kids will get to the point where they're very uncomfortable with it, very itchy, mm -hmm. and we will need to use a short-term little bit of a steroid cream in addition to the moisturizer creams. Yeah. But the key is often trying to prevent to get to that point, mm -hmm. and some of these kids, you really can't bathe them as frequently because their skin gets very dried out, so often they're only bathed a couple of times a week or even once a week. Yeah because their skin just does get very dry and irritated yeah. um, with it, so. Yeah, you know, the bathing is, a, is, is a, maybe it's a good problem, but my kids loved getting in the water, you know? <laughs> so if you're, you're saying don't, they don't need to be bathed every day. Yeah, infants, um, it, it's definitely their skin cannot handle, some of them, the very frequent daily bathing. Mm -hmm. So we'll recommend for all infants that they're only bathed uh, a couple of times a week, two to three times a week. And you don't need to even use a whole lot of soaps in the water. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'll just have you use just plain water alone. And um, occasionally you can use a real good moisturizing soap, like a Dove soap. Mm -hmm. um, but some of the baby products have a lot of perfumes and, and, um, and the babies can be real sensitive, their skin can be. So um, often the less you use on your baby's skin, the better. Mm -hmm for the most part. Yeah, just so. kind of take a natural approach with it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, we've got just about a minute left, <laughs> and I'm just wondering if there's anything, any final thoughts you want to share? That yeah. We've covered a lot of information. Definitely, there is a lot of information, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, just when things come up, just asking, because a lot of times it's a normal, natural process for, for babies to go through and for their skin to go through. Mm -hmm. And very often, there's, there's not a whole lot you as a, as a parent need to do to, mm -hmm. to make the baby skin resolve. So yeah. um, just take, taking care of your baby, not using a whole lot of products on, on the baby, um, and then asking if, if certain things pop up, asking yeah. questions. Yeah. So. I think the, um, a lot of times with parents, do you find they're reluctant to ask questions that they? Yeah, well, Actually, with the skin, we find that a lot of people, that a lot of parents do, because it's just something that's so visible to oh, them yeah, and yeah, such a concern yeah. that it does come up a lot, yeah. definitely. And often we'll just say, you know, during the exam, did you notice this? This is very normal, you yeah. know, and it will go away. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's that's definitely a, a, often a big part of our first couple of visits with parents yeah. is talking about the skin. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us today yes. and just wonderful information, Melissa. This is something that I think every parent of a newborn would want. Yes. So, Thanks for having me. Okay.
292 Baby is a community collaboration of many community partners, and it's administered by Monroe Community College. What you're seeing is a list of those who are supporting or have supported the efforts of 292 Baby to reach out to help support parents and caregivers of infants. We would like to thank each of these contributors for their own unique contribution to this effort. Babies' brains don't grow by themselves. But when you sing to your baby, talk to your baby, and play with your baby, her brain cells learn to grow. So sing to your baby, talk to your baby, play with your baby. Amazing grace. Babies' brains How don't grow by themselves. The sound but when you sing to your baby, talk to like your baby, me. and play with your baby, I once was his brain cells lost, learn to grow. But now so I'm sing to your baby, blind, talk to your baby, but now play I see. with your baby. Our hearts are broken, they are beating, they are beating stronger than ever.